Hi, welcome back to the channel. Um, this is a semi-detached house, a uh, system build made of in situ concrete. I think it's an, an easy form, which is built with a cavity on site. Let's just check if it's there. Yes, it's still there. And then the large air vent on the front. Let's check inside to see if there's any solid fuel burning device. Uh, there's an air vent there, which would mean close investigation to see if it's got a suspended timber floor oh, and another air vent there. So most likely suspended timber floor. Uh, let's go around the back. So we've got quite a lot of pebble dash here. I've had a close look for cavity wall insulation drill holes, um, but I can't seem to see any. Um, very difficult, let alone find a pattern. So sometimes they drill when you can totally see it, but it's been painted over a few times. So the garden's pretty big. Um, at the back we have like a lean-to. I believe that's separated from the main house, but uh, we can always check. So we just draw it on the floor plan, but not include it, because that would still be a heat loss wall. Yes, no, not connected, thermally separate from the house. Okay, so, Yep, definitely no drill hole pattern I can see. So we'll put it down. It's probably cavity, but we'll have to check the thickness first. Hopefully it isn't system build. After further investigation, I found out it's an in situ poured concrete house, which definitely is system build, where there's two layers of concrete with a gap in the middle. So there is a cavity, but um, it wouldn't have been filled because it's uh, classed as a system build property. So in we go, there's a thermostat, um, suspended timber floor, thermostatic radiator valve with radiators, no solid fuel burning appliance or open chimney in the lounge. Uh, so we haven't got 100% low energy bulbs because we've got some old 60 watters there. Um, I think we've got a LED bulb here. So we'll have to work out a percentage of those. Uh, into the kitchen, we have uh, an old electric meter from 1987. That's when it was built. You can see the little date on the electric meter there. Uh, a new compliant metal fuse board. So put in in 2014, it looks like. Another radiator with thermostatic radiator valves. Double glazing. We have uh, on the intermittent strip, I can't see any date stamps. Oh, look, there is one there. I'm not sure if you can see that. That is 2000. Okay. Me measure the thickness of the walls. So, 280 millimeters that is and then some draft proofing strips here and on the front and back doors draft proofing strip let's go upstairs so on the outside i noted that the flue was sticking out at this corner and there we go we have a boiler so here this is the programmer we have a Worcester Green Star 28 CDI compact ERP with a gas cancel number of 4740677. Flow temperature for the radiators, temperature of the hot water. And then, as you can see here, the pressure of the radiators is quite low. But I'll let someone else top that up. The outer skin on these properties is normal aggregate, but the inner skin is made of clinker mixed with cement. TRVs, double glazing, um, an LED light bulb. Yeah, we'll definitely have to work out a percentage of the light bulbs. Then we have a, um, a bath with a mixer shower and another bedroom with a radiator and a light bulb and double glazed. There's my ladder. Check out the link in the description. I'll put everything that's what's in my bag as a link and uh, you can see all the stuff that I have and use. So let's go and check out the loft. <clears throat> so here is a uh, certificate saying how thick the insulation is. 
here we see the party wall. You can see where it had been poured as the formwork has been left some of the horizontal lines on the party wall. Recorded a system stroke timber stroke uh, solid. The insulation thickness is I think 200 mil. And there we go. That'll keep the auditors happy. Remember three points of contact on the ladder. It's quite difficult holding a camera, a tape measure, and measuring loft insulation. But you can always make notes in the site notes. Keep the auditors happy. Right, let's go and write this up. So I'm bringing some chargers with me just to keep my equipment topped up. So I've got this with the um, three different chargers so I can charge all sorts of things. So today I'll be charging my phone. And getting a bit of power in there. And then also for my laser measurer, I've got this plug and this. Just put my uh, AA batteries in there. My Lekia Disto D2, rechargeable batteries, tape measure, and uh, obviously it's a good idea to have spares, which I keep in my pencil case, just in case anything goes wrong, so we haven't got a problem. Anyway, let's get this uh, site notes written up. So today's date is the 10th of July. Get the date wrong on your that's an instant audit failure, so watch out for that. Okay, so um, address, we'll do that later. So it's a rental, social, house, semi-detached, with no extension, because that rear um, lean-to is not thermally connected to the house in any way. It has a gas meter and a single rate electric meter. I'm going to measure it internally. We have uh, three bedrooms, a lounge and a kitchen that can hold a table with four or more chairs. So that means it has five heated habitable rooms. The number of out lighting outlets was nine, and um, five of which were low energy bulbs. We have a bath with a mixer shower. So that is 101. And the build date was the 50s to 1966. So now we're gonna do the windows. So I didn't use my low E detector. This is my low E detector. You put it up against the window and press the button. And if there is a low E coating, it lights up green. And then uh, that shows you that you can put it as post 2002, but they've changed the rules on the audits. You can't do that anymore. You have to have a date. So let's, these windows are made in 2000, year 2000. Let's see if they have a low E coating. Can I see that light? And they don't. It's glowing red. So they were made in the year 2000 and they don't have a low E coating. But before, they changed the audit rules for that. That was a good way of getting an extra two points in the property. Because if we go from pre-2002 to post-2002 double glazing, that's two points on an average property. Right, so we didn't use a low E detector and it's got a normal amount of glazing and it is pre-2002 and I'm going to put the date here because we saw the date on the intermittent strip. So PVC framed, 100% double glazing and the gap was 16 mil. So does it have fixed air conditioning? No. Does it have an open fireplace? No. Does it have mechanical ventilation? No, it has natural ventilation. And the draft proofing strips were on all the windows and the front and back door. There were two doors to the property and none of which were insulated. There was no conservatory and the main heat water system was from the main heating system. So, and there was no cylinder. Secondary heating system was none. Okay, and it had one main primary heating system, and that was a boiler with mains gas to radiators, and it was a fan-assisted flue, and there was a programmer, TRVs, and a room thermostat present. The room thermostat was at the bottom of the stairs, the TRVs was on each radiator, and the programmer was actually built into the boiler. There's no heat recovery. Let's find out the make and model of the boiler. 
So the boiler had a gas council number, which is always good to write down so you can double check, make sure you're getting the right ball here, because some of them have similar names but are different. And that can be an audit failure too. So gas council number GC474. 40677 and that is a Worcester Green Star 28 CDI compact ERP. ERP stands for energy rated product. Right, let's get on to the um the walls and the floors. So we have one main property with no extensions. We think it's cavity wall because it was 280 mil thick, but it um the insulation is going to be put as built. Now I know that a lot of these properties around here had cavity wall insulation done in the 90s but there was no evidence or pattern of drill holes there for the uh, cavity wall insulation. The party wall I'm going to put down as unknown because I wasn't going to crawl across the loft to have a look and I couldn't see any headers so it's just sort of stretches so I couldn't even tell what type of block it was made out of. Um, alternative wall no because there isn't any and then we have a ground floor We've seen the air vents and felt did the drop heel test and so it suspended timber. Okay, and the insulation is as built. Also the age of the property, most likely timber. And because it was 5066, you know, block and beam was very, very rare then. So in the loft, we had access to the loft and insulation was at Joyce and we measured it at 200 mil. And then also we saw um, stapled to one of the rafters was the uh, certificate saying that with, it's got the address of the property and the thickness on there. So a photograph of that, you know, it's good to double check. Uh, what's it called? Belt and braces in case you get an audit. So uh, room in the roof, none. And then renewables, we don't have any of those. Okay, no solar water heating, PV or wind turbine. And the house is a very easy shape to draw. So we just draw a nice square here. And then we put on the back, outside store, okay? And then upstairs, we have the front door, we have the back door, and then we have the electric meter here above the back door. And there's the stairs. And then we have the lounge and we have the kitchen diner. Okay. Then we have upstairs, we have WC, bedroom, bedroom, and I think, was it the bedroom? Okay, yeah, there's three bedrooms, definitely. Okay, and then we had the loft hatch and the boiler is down here in the corner. So that bedroom might be over here a bit. Okay. So now what we need to do is we need to measure the width of the property and the depth of the property, width and depth. And there's the party wall. So my Lechia Disto 2, D2, I've had this for like 13, 14 years and it, it really is good. The range on it, I've noticed I've used cheaper ones, they're just pretty rubbish. The, you know, the, the laser doesn't go right across the house, but I've never had a range problem with this, except for trying to use it outside in the sun shining, but that's just any laser measure would have that problem. So you can see it's quite battered, but you know, with those rechargeable batteries and that um, USB charger that I use, I always keeping it up. So turn that on and then fire it across. There's a little red dot up there above the door. So that gives us, and we can press this button here to change it to meter squared. So we try that again. There's a red dot, fire. So that's the first measurement. So nearly six meters. And then we're gonna go for the width. So we we'll stick that on the wall here like that. Fire it across the lounge, there's the red dot. And then that's uh, 5.1, which gives us a meter squared of 30. 987, so it's 30.99. So that's the cheaper backup one, which doesn't quite reach the, um, the, the, the width of a house. 40 meter range, but hey, you know, no, not likely. So with the trusty uh, Lekia, we're gonna go 5966 six, 
5194. So that gives us 30.99 because it's seven, so we round up. And then downstairs the same. Now we just need to do ceiling heights upstairs and downstairs. 2.41 and 2589, so 259. So I put a QR code to the playlist of my YouTube channel so new resident can scan that and then see how to best use their Drayton Digistack and then the programmer that goes with the, um, the Worcester Green Star. So the room heights, two, four, one below, and then first floor, two, five, nine. We have the party wall, which is five, one, nine, five, one, nine. And then we have the meter squared upstairs. Okay, and then we want the heat loss perimeter, which is from here, here, and here, straight through the outside store. And there, so five, nine, nine, six, six. 5966 six. and then the width 5194 12 plus 4 is uh, 16 carry 1 12 plus 9 so uh, 21 22 that's right yeah 22 carry 2 18 plus 2 is 21 so 1 carry 2 15, 16, 17, 17, 13. 17, 13 is the heat loss perimeter. And that's the EPC then. So now just to take, write the address on and then take the photograph of the site notes and then I can load that up in um, the RDSAP app and save it to the memory card on my phone. I've got a 512 gig memory card on the phone. That way I've got access it on my phone and it's also saved in the cloud via the ID SAP app. All right, well, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out the Facebook um, uh, group as well. So, you know, help and support is always available there. Um, thanks for watching, bye.